So this week, in keeping with my sort of gothic theme um, for October, of course we've looked at gothic in the sense that people usually think of it as an architectural style. But this week I want to talk about the really most particularly iconic American image of the 20th century, and that is Grant Wood's American Gothic. And the background that we see here, the house that is, is the eponymous American Gothic house, which you can actually visit. It's actually a real house that's located somewhere in Iowa. And the reason this painting is called American Gothic is because of the architectural style of the house. So we talked about Gothic Revival in my Gothic architecture video a few weeks ago. But this is Gothic Revival in a very traditional country American sense. So this is what we call car Carpenter Gothic or Rural Gothic. And these are usually buildings that are small, so like churches or farmhouses. Traditional Gothic architecture is made from carved stone but Carpenter Gothic works with wood. So it gives these buildings sort of a, a quaintness, sort of a country charm that's entirely distinct from the, the European Gothic or the traditional Gothic revival styles that we're used to and that we've looked at in some of uh, the previous week's videos. So this is very much a scene from traditional Midwest America, life on the Iowan farm. And we see the, the farmer here, and this is his aging daughter, the classic spinster. Wood said that he wanted to paint the the types of people that he imagined might live in a house like this, but in terms of models he actually used his own sister and his dentist. And they, they have this very kind of confrontational, stern look. And when we talk about figure painting we always want to consider the the facial expressions and the, the way that the figures are looking at the viewer. Are they staring at us head on? Are they gazing maybe at something in the distance? And we usually talk about this, at least on this channel, we've talked about it in the context of Impressionism, in the sort of casual strolling or fleeting glance of the flaneur. But there's a, a much greater deal, I think, of psychological depth here. And this is what makes this painting kind of interesting. In terms of subject matter, it belongs to this movement of American regionalism, which focuses on themes and sort of the day-to-day -day lives that would, would have been characteristic of the American Midwest. So the father here is the, the hard-working farmer. If we want to talk about this painting in terms of, um, through like a kind of a, a, the lens of gender stereotypes, he's fulfilling the traditional masculine role here, holding the pitchfork. And Smart History, in their video on this painting, made what I thought was a very interesting observation about the facial expression of the father, is that it seems like his expression is about ready to change in you know, a matter of just a, a second or two. And we don't know if either he's going to have some sort of a stern warning or message for us, or whether this sort of apathetic look that he has is about to break into a smile. So once again, purposefully ambiguous. And I think that's really why one of the main reasons why this painting is so popular is that it lends itself very well to a lot of different interpretations. The daughter, on the other hand, is, is she's staring off at something in the distance, and once again, we're not exactly sure how, what to make of that. Is she aspiring, perhaps, to be somewhere else? She's probably never lived anywhere other than this house. She's never been to the city. Um, so is she aspiring towards something like that, or is she comfortable here with her life, kind of accepted this uh, spinsterhood? And we can talk now, this might be a good opportunity since we're focusing on the daughter, to talk about some of the sort of more minute geometric patterns or motifs that we see here. So if we look at the daughter's apron, and the pattern here is reflected in the curtain that's hanging up here in the Gothic window. Okay? And in terms of patterns here, we see some instances of visual parallelism that kind of draw the eye to particular repeated kind of geometric, like I said, repeated geometric motifs or patterns. For instance, we talked about the apron and the curtain. Also, the way that the pitchfork forms parallel lines with the farmer's shirt. And then the ruffled pattern here on the top of the daughter's apron is also reminiscent of the roof line here on the house. It's kind of a jagged. And, and the roof line in general here is forms these steep angles, so along here, and then we also see it along the side of this barn here, which really stands in pretty stark contrast to the way that Woods has chosen to paint these trees as these sort of amorphous blobs in the background, which should come as a bit of a surprise considering the, the attention to detail that he uses uh, for the particularly the facial features, I think, of the farmer here. So Woods, even though he was born and raised in Iowa, was fairly 
well traveled, so he had been exposed to a lot of the um, a, a lot of the the older European styles of painting. And art historians particu particularly say that he was influenced by the Northern Renaissance, based on the attention to detail that he uses uh, when he paints faces. So we can talk specifically about all the sort of lines and creases in the farmer's face. And I'll put a link up to my uh, to my video on von Eyck's Arnolfini portrait, so you can kind of compare. Um, the style of painting that's used here for the farmer with a an actual northern renaissance painting so the reason then that perhaps he's kind of ignored the 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 amount of detail that we see in the foreground here when we're talking about the trees is that he's sort of creating a, a crude kind of atmospheric perspective so we've talked about this idea before that objects that are further in the distance are painted with less detail to reflect the fact that the eye is able to discern you know, less and less detail the farther and farther away an object is in the distance. And it establishes depth here, which is Im important considering that the, at least the foreground of the image has a, a sort of a flatness to it. And we talked about this when we were discussing uh, Botticelli's Birth of Venus, is that these two figures in this very kind of plane created almost sort of a freeze. And we get a little bit of depth here considering the fact that the daughter is positioned behind the man. Once again, we could discuss the sort of gender roles here, the conventional um, conventional gender roles. But that atmospheric perspective also helps establish some depth, as well as I think the angularity here of the barn, okay, and being further away from the house in terms of the, uh, the relative sizes. Okay, so in terms of the political or social message here, I think you can really see whatever you want to see. You can ar definitely argue that Woods is perhaps poking fun at the uh, sort of the outdated conservatism and the traditionalism of the Midwest, or maybe he's attempting this sort of honest, objective depiction of what life is like in the Midwest at this point in time. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we could argue that perhaps the painting is meant to be interpreted in a transcendentalist sense. Maybe it's anti-industrial. So perhaps Woods is trying to glorify this style of country life as an alternative, a, really a preferable alternative, to the hectic vibe that we have in, in American cities, in you know, the urban life in the United States at this point in time. And keep in mind the historical context here. This is painted in 1930, so right at the onset of the, the Great Depression, American families are really beginning to feel the reality of the slump you know, in, the, in the economy, and then in Europe we have the, the Nazi party picking up steam. So it's a very dynamic time in America, and at least I think you really get the sense from this painting that perhaps things are going to get worse before they get better, but th really the, the overall message that I usually take away from this painting, and this is just my sort of opinion, is that it's really a, a testament that Woods is going for here, a testament to the preservation and the work ethic of the American spirit as this prevailing force that will ultimately lead the country through difficult times.